Hey, you comic book geeks and your sci-fi freaks. This is Comic Book Casey coming at you from Kansas City, Missouri. I am here with Jezebel. She is from First Comic News, and she was my partner in crime on this journey because it was just me, our doctor, Denver, the director, and Jezebel doing this journey together. Big ups to you, Jill. You got a little sick on us, baby, but we did it for you. I feel better. Definitely feel better, Jill. Anyway, we are currently in an area where we just had coffee because we're hitting a plane in a couple hours, but we want to talk about our experience at the Comic Comic Con, the Planet Comic Con, and I want uh, to introduce Jezebel here from First Comic News. Why don't you give us a little background on your editorial and articles that you do? Okay. Um, well, I've been writing for First Comics News for about five years now, um, and uh, about six months into writing reviews, I realized that I am essentially a press member. Uh, so I started applying for conventions. Uh, I've done New York Comic Cons, uh, C2E2. I'm a three-time panelist at San Diego International Comic Con on how to achieve media attention for your independently published comic book. And I just, I really love conning. Con is love, con is life. <laughs> Basically, you live that Comic-Con gypsy life like we do. That's the best life to live, but the advantage that we have is we get to go to breweries on top of that. Well, I still go to breweries, but I don't necessarily interview the people, but yeah, I still like good beer. <laughs> yeah, we interview them and get their beer. Right. <laughs> yeah, so basically what we want to talk about now is the Comic-Con. We got some pros and cons about it, but ultimately I think it was a great comic convention. And uh, that was this was Comics Beer and Sci-Fi's first time coming to the Planet Comic Con. How about you? As well. This is my first time. Uh, I actually met Chris Jackson a few years ago at San Diego. Uh, and I really just wanted, he's a nice guy, and I really just wanted to come check out his convention. And it's definitely grown over the years. Um, I mean, he's started it in 1999, and it's, it's changed halls. Um, and, and their attendance is just growing. And I, I was actually very impressed with this convention. Um, the floor layout was fabulous. It's probably one of the best layouts I've seen in a really long time, you know, and because that makes a difference. The aisles were really wide and it was able, people were able to navigate and actually find things. And I've had, I mean, I've, I went to WonderCon last year and there was literally people up against the wall in between the bathroom and the concession sand. Like they got no, no coverage whatsoever. So I was really impressed with this convention and apparently Chris pretty much does all the layout himself. So uh, yeah. I totally agree with you. The floor plan was awesome. Chris did an excellent job with the setup. It had great star power there, great vendors. I mean, great artists that were there. Absolutely. Um, I was totally impressed. No disappointments except for the food. That was my only problem. The food lines, it was, it was just a lack of enough coverage uh, for that magnitude of people. Right. I mean, wouldn't you say that they, they came up short on the food trucks? Absolutely. Um, but I don't necessarily feel that it's their fault. Um, just from kind of talking to people, I came under the information that the, there's a food vendor that had a, an exclusive at the convention hall so it's not really the convention's fault um, and they were able I guess to negotiate a little bit because there were a lot of people uh, and they brought in several food trucks but I mean it was just a massive at 1245 you're, you're waiting in line for an hour and a half and I don't like to wait and I certainly don't like to stand so I agree I mean okay granted it's not the convention holder the person hosting the events fault but the convention center itself could have done a little bit more justice to those of us that are at these conventions right. from 9 a.m until approximately 7 or 8 p.m right. we get hungry Absolutely. we need to eat we don't need to stand in line an hour to get a hot dog or get a burger or some loaded french fries yeah and then you know like so some people have problems if you don't eat you go a little rah rah you know if i if i don't eat i go a little rah rah so i was like i, I ended up just going to the yard house which was down the street um you know because they had pretty good beer and the food was pretty decent a little overpriced but whatever yeah we found a food truck outside of the convention but you know again like you're saying about getting a little rah rah yeah. i get hangry and yep. honestly i'm a, not a violent person but i was ready to drop kick a couple of those cosplayers that got in my way especially the fat dudes with the spandex on that were just right there in the food line i need that spot more than you jude you don't need to be in that food line as much as i do okay because uh i need to eat and interview you about your costume, but if you're in my way in that line, I'm gonna drop kick you and get you out of my way so I can get that hot dog. I like to say that I'm a Snickers commercial. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, um, I mean, what else? Um, we, we did some cool stuff. We, we got some really cool stuff going on there. Um, Jason Momoa, 
we both got to meet him. Absolutely. Um, and I kind of wish that I would have gotten it, but there was just so many people in his line and um, and even how they set it up, they kind of got people through a little quick, um, but it was really just kind of boom, 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 boom. I kind of wanted to ask him if his eyebrows were just naturally that brooding. I just wanted to ask him about where he was hiding his Guinness beer stash. The rumor was he functions at these events with Guinness beer. I was going to ask him, hey, man, pass a brother a beer, <laughs> hook me up, at least give me that if I can't get the interview. But that's another thing I want to touch on, the fact that we are press. We got press passes for these things. We didn't really get the interviews that we were supposed to have gotten, probably not to the fault of the convention holder, the management, but some other reasons. Uh, yeah. Um, I mean, we both applied very early. We were both in constant contact sending emails. I got no reply until I sent Chris a message and was like, look, we're not getting any response from your press team. Um, so I, I sent Chris an email. He forwarded it uh, to them in addition to another email from him saying, hey, you know, this is what's going on. Um, we were under, you know, and I understand that Saturday is a really big day and people, you know, they don't necessarily have enough time for press. Us. Um, however, they repeatedly told us that, um, or in that interview, or that email back, that we were going to be able to, they were going to start sending out emails, they were going to include us in all of the panels and interviews, they were trying to get some stuff together, and after that last email, we got no response. So, you know, at that point, it's pretty much us to, up to us to collect those interviews, you know, uh, any, way possible. any way possible. And um, I actually saw, <laughs> I waited in line on Saturday for Danny Trejo, because I wanted his signature, and, um, you know, we're press, so I feel like uh, if we're there covering the convention, we should be allowed to take photos, not necessarily interviews, but I should at least be able to get some photos. And so I just, you know, I casually asked, I was like, hey, can, you know, can I also take a picture for my article? And they're like, no, that's a selfie, it's 50 bucks. I'm like, yeah, but I'm, I'm press. Can I can I just get a photo for my article? And so then like 11.45 or, um, in the morning, they sent out an email saying that the, process was harassing some people so I don't know if that necessarily correlated to me they're talking about me so Danny Drayhill's people complained about me but I didn't ask him for an interview I just asked him for a fucking photo okay so I'm there covering press oh sorry I didn't mean I don't know if I'm allowed to say that don't worry we do it all the time okay, okay cool cool cuz yeah so um you know and I feel like if we're there covering for press and you're going to present these people as part of your convention then we should be allowed to take pictures of whatever we want um, to include in our articles in order to cover your press. So I just, I kind of, uh, I was a little annoyed about that, but. Understandable, but we got lucky with a couple of areas with the celebrities because we've been doing this a long time. So fortunately we were able to finagle a few words from a few people. Our director Denver and I got to meet Michael Rooker, AKA Yandu, AKA Merle Dixon. So cool guy. And he actually retweeted us right after the picture was sent out to the universe. So, and um, you know, we actually, icing on the cake for us was we got to meet the Batman metal guys. We got to meet Scott Snyder and crew, Jonathan and Greg. It was awesome. They were very uh, welcoming, very opening to everybody. They signed it, uh, you know, just about everything you brought to them. It was Q&A sessions. Just great guys. It was an honor to meet them. Got the whole collection of the metal comics. So I feel very fortunate that I came out with that at least and photo ops, interviewed. I mean, basically, we got a lot sure. from those guys. And uh, so big ups to Scott Snyder and Jonathan and Greg. You guys are awesome. If you see this, we still want to see that Batman metal movie that me and you talked about last night, man. I want my 5% of that, too, if you pull that off. You guys did Batman versus Robin. I want to see Batman metal, a animated movie. That would be awesome. Hell, I'll even try to do some voiceovers for you if you let me. So that was my great experience because I'm a comic book guy. Okay. So I actually got to um, interview Scotty Young. And uh, I Hate Fairyland is probably one of, it's my current most favorite title that's in existence right now. Um, it's just it's such a cute story. It's really well written and it's fun. Um, and he was uh, very kind enough to give me that interview. So thanks. Um, and he's, you know, kind of, I got some rundown with him. That's on my first Comics News YouTube page. So I've, that's already been posted. And um, yeah, I was really, I was, I'm, I'm kind of fortunate that I got that because I literally showed up and um, the, he was away from his booth for a little while. Um, but he had a solid line around his table and around the backside. I made it work, you know, and that's the thing, you know, all you can do is stop by and ask somebody. If they say yes, they say yes. If they say no, they say no, and you move on. 
And well, some of us are used to rejections, especially those of us that have been in this geek world a long time. We're used to it. So, but anyway, we're about to sign off because we have a plane to catch. So this will be Comic Book Casey and Jezebel signing off from Kansas City, heading to the airport to get back to good old cold Detroit. Great experience. Yes. Kansas City, we are out.